The Reform Gamers is brought to you 100% independent and ad-free thanks to our dear patrons over on patreon.com slash Gamers to get yourself sweet, sweet perks such as uncut early access to the episodes, special episodes of the podcast, and more. Head on over to patreon.com slash Gamers and consider lending support and joining the herd. Without further ado, let's hop into the show. Hello and welcome, dear listeners, to episode 175 of the Reform Gamers, the show all about theology, video games, and looking back at a past generation of gaming, anything else that we can think of. I'm your nostalgic host, Logan. And I'm his co-host, Adam. Adam, 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 how is it that in the year of our Lord, 2020, <laughs> we finally reached September, and at the same time, I have thought we would never get here, and yet at the same time, it's like, how did we get here? You know what I mean? And how did we get here without having heard PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X prices yet? Yeah, yeah. It is a wild time to be alive. 2020 has just been a wild year to begin with, man. Like, (laughs) nothing has gone in any way, shape, or form the way that we thought it would. Between a pandemic, conspiracy theories around the pandemic, conspiracy theories around our presidential election, uh, just the racial, uh, whatever you want to call it, craziness that's going on, it is quite the year and then a console battle on top of all of that what it's a wild time to be alive that's a wild time i do want to shout out some people on twitter because they uh you know i put it out on, on twitter if you're not following us on twitter what are you doing trg podcast get on there link will be in your show notes um i asked people you know how much do you think these cu- these systems are going to cost but i'm like I don't, I don't really i'm not interested in what they're actually going to cost i want to know what the wrong <laughs> answers only are that was pretty funny and one guy said uh, two PlayStation twos, so you you have to you have to use you have to have two PlayStation twos. Clever. To sell them. Thank you, Matthew Robertson. PlayStation four, but who's paying attention? <laughs> right. Guys with Bibles just gave me a gift of Patrick. Two PlayStation twos and a PS one. <laughs> That'll get you the power of a PS five. You just cram them all together. Just tape them. Just duct tape them together, <laughs> and then you, and you go from there. Guys with Bibles just sent me a gift of Patrick holding up three dollars, and I'm like, all right. I, I can I can rock with that. And then Infinity Bros gave us a, a price comparison of a Asus router and a mini fridge. <laughs> Dude, like, how about uh Isaac from isn't it the Infinity Bros or is it mm-hmm. that got the PC giveaway from Pastor Susie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that if you listen dope. to the podcast or not, but dude, congrats on that. That was pretty rad. I do want to also, you know, you just made me think of something. I want to take a moment to give a shout out to Everyday Gamers. If you guys haven't been following us on Twitter, they uh, recently put out their last episode after being around for, I want to say close to 10 years, I think. Yeah, it's forever. Been around a long time, man. They're the OGs of the uh, Christian gaming podcast scene. You know, we've had Meef J on a couple times. And, uh, yeah, man, end of an era. I don't think I've been that bummed out since the totally rad show ended back in like 2012. So wild stuff, man. Wild stuff. 2020, man. We've lost a lot this year. I don't like it. Everyday gamers was one of them. Sad day. Everyday gamers was one. Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. Mm. Golly, dude. It's what a year, man. What a year. But instead of focusing on the sad stuff, let's try and focus on some of the positives here. She kind of goes in along with one of my records later, but I'll get to it later. We are back and we are going, this is kind of the start of a new series almost. We're calling it like best of um, the different systems that we're going to go over some of our uh, ranked best of games for the PlayStation four this episode. And of course we'll do one over Xbox and we'll do one over Nintendo. Uh, we may not do time. Nintendo because they're kind of still in the middle of a generation. That's but. true. Probably That's Xbox. True. We'll do a top five for Xbox. Top three. Definitely. Maybe. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so savage. Anyway, guys, before we get into the show, <laughs> a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as always, there's new content going on up on the website. Wesley wrote is kicking it. Kicking it? Yeah, no, he's kicking it well with the uh, retrospective series. He just put out an article here recently. 
on one of the best Mega Man games you probably never played in Mega Man Battle Network. So go check that out. Link is in your show notes. Uh, also a reminder, our episodes are on YouTube. I'm slowly getting them on there. I think we're missing like two episodes, three episodes now. Um, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. If you, if you like them, so if you like those episodes a lot, share them with your friends, uh, your pastor, I don't know, your grandma at Chick-fil-A. I don't know. Just share them with people. Um, also join our discord discord server. We, uh, we're about to hit 450 members over there. Thing is blowing up. It is popping. Get over there, have some fun and enjoy. I also want to let you know, uh, to follow me on Twitch, let you know, let you know about whatever words are hard. You can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the theologian. Uh, just to let you know, Labor Day weekend, I'm taking that weekend off to do some projects around the house. We're going to do some painting. We're going to do some landscaping. It's going to be totally awesome. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take that weekend off to just, uh, hang out with a wifey and just, uh, get some projects done and just do whatever I want. Probably we'll stream that Friday morning though. But by the time you're hearing this, that's already long past. And I just realized that only the dear patrons who get these episodes early are going to hear this. Anyway, that's what happened. Labor Day weekend. Took the time off. Hung out with my wife. It was good stuff. Uh, speaking of Patreon, if you'd like to support us over on Patreon.com slash The Reform Gamers, you can do so for as low as a dollar a month. That gets you early access to all of our episodes. Imagine that. Early access to all of our episodes. You can be one of the cool kids at school or wherever it is you work. And be like, you know, I was listening to the Reform Gamers episode 175, and people are like, wait a minute, that episode isn't out yet. It's like, I'm a patron. They're like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. So if you want to be one of the cool kids at the water cooler, or maybe you don't have a water cooler now because of COVID, if you want to be one of the cool kids at the place that you work or go to school, support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, gets you early access. Or if you can't support us financially, totally understand. Uh, these are tough times. You can rate and review the show on your podcast app of choice. That helps out, helps out, helps us out in a long way. I can't talk tonight, guys, as usual. That helps us out in a long way. And then the just, long run. It just helps us out in the long run. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Golly. It helps us out. Matt Currently, I appreciate you leaving us a review. I'm sorry I broke your heart because I didn't play uh, some video game. I can't remember what it was. We were talking about the Discord, and it broke his heart. And he's like, I'm going to take down my review. But thankfully, you did not. I appreciate you so much. For leaving that five star review up, as always, you guys can leave your ratings and reviews on your apps of your choice. And uh, yeah, that's it for housekeeping. So let's get into the show, Adam. Dude, we start the show off like we always do a little bit of what have we been playing? And what have you been playing? Yeah, um, it's been a wild, wild last couple of weeks. As I was sharing a little bit in the pre show, I've been preaching, um, our, our lead pastor's on a sabbatical, so uh, I've me and another pastor are preaching through the book of first John. So my mental focus has really been a lot on developing the series and just coming home and trying to focus on family and, and yeah. all the things. So having got to play as much as I'd like, but i um, still playing that fall guys. I think I am up to yeah. 13 or 14 crowns at this point. Are you serious? Yeah, man. There was, I had like, Wow. A two nights span where I was on fire, and then I took like a week off. It felt like kind of lost some of my mojo, but I've won a couple in the last week. Again, I'm not getting to play it a ton. I think mm-hmm. it's one of those games where if I was if I was putting in the time, I could be legit at that game. But mm. I, I go, I don't play consistently enough to to get to like next level. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I've got at least I think I'm at 13 or. Somewhere between twelve and fourteen. I'll know once I hit my the twenty crowns to get that trophy. But um, nice. dude, I love that game. It's so much fun. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm 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 gonna probably hopefully I'll max out the season and get all the way um, to level forty. I think there's like thirty days still, so there's a lot of time. Okay. Um, I'd like to max all the way out this season because who knows if I'll ever get that far again. But I'm excited for season two. Some of the stuff they showed on um, at the game awards. Um, or the game, whatever it is, the nightly stuff. Gamescom. Um, it, it was Gamescom, like Summer Games Fest. Gotcha. Game Awards. It was like yeah, like five titles. I felt like, but <laughs> it's it's cool what they're going to be doing with next season, man. And what a get for PlayStation Plus. Like, yeah. I remember when we got Rocket League, and we're like, wow, like we got this game for free, and now it's one of the biggest games in the world. Mm-hmm. And like, we just got Fall Guys for free. Like, what a steal. Yeah, um, dude. What a steal. So I've been playing a good amount of that. 
Um, you know, I'll probably get in 15 to 20 maybe games a week, if not a little bit more than that. But mm-hmm. the thing I've been playing the most is Ghost of Tsushima. Mm. So I haven't mm. finished it. I just got to X3. A lot of that, again, is there was a while where I just wasn't getting to play a lot. And then we recently, I moved the, so that I could play more. I moved the PlayStation to our bedroom so that <laughs> I can play it until 1 a.m. and lose my sleep. <laughs> But I've been so there's been a couple of nights where I'm like, okay, one more mission, one more mission, one more mission. Let me just go do this thing. Let me go do this. I'm gonna go clean this up real quick. Let me go take care of this uh, camp. And next thing you know, I've played it for another hour. I mean, it's yeah. it's got that addiction, you know, stew that you just want to keep uh, keep playing. So that game, it, it's excellent. It, I like that. I like that you call it a stew. That's a. Uh, it's pretty. I think that's pretty apt. You just you just can't stop, you know. It's like it's we're in soup season, so mm-hmm. up here in the, the in the North Country of New York, so it's starting to get cool, and we start making soups. You know, it's stoops and stews, or stews, <laughs> soups and stews, <laughs> uh, so. soups and stews, dude. That's a new <laughs> business right there. Let's get it started. Uh, we'll put it on a coffee mug. Um, <laughs> our soup season is probably a good. You could put that on a T-shirt. No, nah, dude, soups and stews. That's what we're going with. That'll be our other podcast, our our, our weekly uh, uh, news updates. Anyways, we're, we're, we're chasing a rabbit trail. So I've been playing some Ghost of Tsushima, and I am excited to do an episode on it sometime. It's going to be good. Teacher. It's going to be, gonna cool. be good. It's going to be good. But the last game I played briefly um, that I haven't got too far in is uh, it's a game called A Short Hike. It is a PC game, but I got it. Um, y'all can judge me if you want, but I was trying to get some free games. I paid five bucks for the itch.io social justice video game pack where you got like a thousand games for five bucks. And this was one of the games on it. And it's a fun little game. You play as a bird. You're trying to make it to the top of this mountain and you go around and you're meeting all these different animals on the hike. And they, they kind of send you on little side missions of like, Hey, get me 15 seashells. Get me, um, I lost my headband. Can you help me find it? And they like give you stuff to help you on your hike. So, uh, it's been a fun little game. I played maybe 45 minutes of it. It's just, I play it at work on my P on my Mac. So it's just a nice little chill game. If I, if I want to play something on my lunch break. So I'll probably, I might have it finished by the next time we record again. I don't play it that much. It's not a very long game. I think it's only a couple hours, but it's just a matter of sitting down and playing it. But it's a, it's a cute little game. It's definitely worth checking out if you, um, if you bought that bundle or, um, I think it's coming out maybe on piece uh, on switch, but it's, it's a cute little game. It's like super pixelated graphics, but, um, yeah, it's fun. A short hike. Check it out. I'm not going to lie. You got me super giddy when you said you were playing a PC game and I was like, it's finally happened. And then you were like. And you just kept going. I'm like, oh, you, you had me in the first half. Not gonna lie. Check it out. I, I mean, I didn't describe it super, but it's it's a cute little it's a cute little game. I mean, it's not like trying to be a world beater, but the time I've played, I've enjoyed it. It's kind of fun. It's it's kind of got a Breath of the Wild feel to it, where you can you can climb anything. It's just a matter of if you got the stamina get to get to the top. And when you get up high, since you're playing as a bird, you can kind of glide. And gliding feels really good in this game. Like it feels really cool. So I was more getting giddy at the idea of you transitioning over to PC gaming and like, yes, hey, now we can we can just be hey, PC when gamers. Store, when our merch store hits it big. Okay. Who knows? We'll see what happens. That's what we gotta do. Dear listeners, you gotta buy fifty hoodies and we'll get Adam a PC. We'll get him one of those new uh I'm definitely not against PC gaming. We'll get him one of those new NVIDIA cards. The cost of it. Yep, and if we're going to get you a PC, we're going to go big. We'll get you one of those, uh, what is it? What is it? Dear listener can correct me. What are the NVIDIA GeForce uh, 3090s? Oh, the the new ones. Giant flipping tower looking thing. Oh, man. I know I don't need those at all, but I want one really bad. I don't need it. That's too much power for me, but I want it anyway. Anyway, power. as far as what I have been playing, though, um, nothing PC related. It's all <laughs> PS4 stuff So. <laughs> built a PC and I still play a PS4. That's just how I roll. Hey, Sony pony till I die. Uh, speaking of Sony pony and all that jazz guys, we've been doing the 20 platinums in 2020 in the community with the completionist players here in the group. And everyone is outpacing me. Okay. I was about ready to give up, throw on the towel. Be like, you know, what? it's time to hand over the crown to the, to these other up and coming 
uh, completionists. They they are surpassing the teacher. But like John Wick, I have come back and gotten a new platinum in Ghost of Tsushima, making it my 13th plat of the year, 77th plat total. So uh, just saying, guys, daddy's back. Daddy's home. And he's going to get some more plats before the year is out. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, dude. I can't wait until we do an episode on it because holy guacamole, this game was not even on my radar. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. And then I saw the good reviews. It's like, ah, you know what? Fine, I'll give it a shot. And now here I am. I'm like, this is one of my favorite games I played in 2020. Such a cool game hmm. on so many levels. Um, there's a few gripes I have, but overall, what a treat. What a treat <laughs> of a game. Oh, man. So good. Most so good. Oh, golly. I wish I could gush on it more, but I'll save it for the episode. I'm going to save that energy for that. I will say this, too. Uh, another game I have been playing uh, has been Destroy All Humans, the remaster that they came out with. And I got to say, this is the right level of good, dumb fun that I needed in 2020. It's not serious. It's completely goofy. It's surprisingly hilarious. Like, there's a point in the game where you have to uh, impersonate the mayor of a town and you can just blame all the bad stuff that's happening on communism. And it's just. Sounds uh, about it, right. It's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so, it's so goofy, man. And, and for some of you, some of you may remember this cartoon, some of you may not. Uh, Nickelodeon used to have this uh, cartoon called Invader Zim. And uh, the main alien in Destroy All Humans, or I should say the alien overlord dude that's uh, leading crypto is voiced by the guy that does Invader Zim. So it's cool at how they connect like that. And it's overall just a uh, it's a fun game. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. It's completely goofy. Um, there's some kind of like potty humor is what I would call, especially when you use the anal probe weapon. But yeah, overall, it's it still feels like a PS2 game, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think in 2020, we all kind of need something like that to um, kind of take our minds off of just some of the uh, darkness that has that has been in this year. And so it's a blast. And then this one I'll talk about briefly. I only played about an hour of it and um I'll share it a little bit. Played Manifold Garden hmm. on a PS4. It's a if you watch the Nintendo Indie World thing, it got announced there, and it's this kind of inception, mind bending, platform shifting kind of puzzle game that is really psychedelic in the sense that it's it's that kind of level of mind bending, but at the same time, it's really like complex I, i'm trying to think of another game to to relate this with but i can't really think of anything outside of maybe braid or i oh, i just had another one uh the witness it's like it's uh it's really intricate it's really cool dear listeners go look up a trailer for this um it's a really solid game it's supported well by the developer and it's really stinking rad in my opinion uh, so that is Manifold Garden on the PS4. You can also play it on Switch. I think it's on PC too, but really, really cool game. Really cool game. So let's switch gears here and talk about what have we been reading, Adam. Man, what have you been getting into as of lately in regards to books? Yeah, so people who have been longtime listeners, they may be like, didn't you read this before? And I've started this book and not finished it before. Yes, I have. But my wife and I, so we finished our Devo that we been doing for like it's not supposed to take six months it was supposed to take like six weeks but i feel like it took us six months and we recently said she's like what do you want to do you can kind of take lead so i was just looking on our book bookshelf and so i saw the screw tape letters so i'm like the chapters are short enough that i said let's just read the screw tape letters together and we'll talk about it and you know see how and so what we did is we read the chapters and then we read a summary because if you've read screw tape letters, it can kind of be um, hard to catch everything just with some of the language that C.S. Lewis uses. And then we, we, I found, I just kind of searched like discussion questions for screw tape letters or something like that. And so we found a pretty good, uh, some just 
discussion questions. So if anybody is interested in doing this, I can send you the links to these. Like they're really, um, they've been really helpful just so, so we'll read it and then we'll just kind of walk through the questions and kind of engage them together. And we're only three chapters into it, but it's been like, it's been really good. Like I've really enjoyed the discussion. And even today when we were, I was at work in our, um, our pastor's meetings, uh, like I referenced chapter two a lot. It talks about like, um, screw tapes, telling wormwood. If you're familiar with the book, like, uh, keep your patient is what they would, they call the person. Keep your patient distracted by things in the church. Like get them worried about, um, the hypocrites in the pew next to them or the dirty person next to them or something like that. If you can keep them distracted with everything else going on around the church, you can keep them from really contemplating the big things that are going on, uh, inside their soul or something like that. So it's, it was really, I mean, really applicable to what we were talking through with some of the things in our meeting today. So, um, yeah, Hannah and I are doing screw tape letters. I'm excited to see how we kind of, you know, everybody loves the book who's read it. So, um, I'm excited to kind of talk through that with her and read together. I'm looking for my next book that I'm going to read in my quiet time. I, I realize there's a couple of books that I never quite finished. So I want to wrap up a couple, a couple other books, but, um, there's a book by a girl named Hannah Anderson called, uh, recapturing, I think the art of discernment. A lot of people were kind of, um, recommending it back in the day. And it was, I don't buy many books cause I get, you can find so many of them free through different resources nowadays, but this is one that I bought for like two bucks at one point. So I'm like, if I bought it, I need to read it at some point. So that's kind of how I'll pick a lot of the books that are in. So that might be the next one, but we'll see. I know you're right the reading on. machine. So um, Just a little like bit. every other, every other day I see you're finishing a book and rating it on good reads. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hoping to finish another one this week, actually, on leadership. So I'll talk a nice. little bit about that uh, next episode, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't have this second book in my show notes. I'll talk about it briefly towards the end. Uh, last episode, I think I mentioned this. I was reading a book titled If God, Why Evil by Norman Geisler. Finished that to get ready for a sermon series that I'm starting with my students, answering some difficult questions about Christianity. And the first one we're tackling is if God is good, why is there evil? Feeling pretty confident about that lesson. What I'm not feeling so confident is in recommending this book. I didn't realize how anti-Calvinist Norman Geisler is until after (laughs) I'd finished the book, but I started picking up on some hints when I was initially reading through the book and I'm, and I was kind of scratching my head at a few of the things that he stated because there was one point in the book where he makes it sound like, we as Christians can override God's sovereignty. It wasn't quite worded in that way, but as you read it and you think about it, you're left wondering, wait, did he just say that we can override God's sovereignty with our free will because of our choosing? That doesn't make much sense. And so uh, I don't, I don't know where I land on this book there. there, It got me to think in some really good ways Uh, especially outside of the box when it comes to presenting this kind of topic to students. But he tries to, he tries to pull in stuff from reform theology and in a really weird way, kind of dispute it. And it just, to me, it comes off as a little cringy because it's like hmm. it, it was just kind of out of left field and it didn't really need it to be put in at that specific point. So it it was weird. It's always weird when an author does that. Like they're talking about a topic and then they go out of their way to take a pot shot at something else. And it's just, it's not necessary in my opinion. And overall, I think for someone that is wanting to get into apologetics for the first time, I think this is a decent resource. But at the same time, I wasn't the hugest fan of this book in, in a lot of, in, in, for those reasons. And so, I don't know, maybe you guys can, can lend me your thoughts if you guys have read the book, but I wasn't really a huge fan of it. I liked some of there, there's, like I said, there was some stuff in there that was good, but overall, man, I just, uh, and as far as like the good stuff, I, I can't really get into it on here because it would require me to take a lot of time to elaborate some of these concepts in a way that I don't know that I'm necessarily the right person for. And I also don't think I have the time for it. So 
if you guys want to check it out, you can just go to Goodreads, look at look me up. It's the Theologian. You can see my review. I go in depth in there, and and that's where it is. And as far as what else I've been reading, I've been getting into well a lot of marketing books. And so I finished a book called Platform by Michael Hyatt. He is actually the CEO of Thomas Nelson Publishers. You guys probably recognize that publishing company because they put out a lot of uh, Christian content. Some of you, some of their content you may be okay with, some of their stuff you may not be. But either way, had a lot of really good insights on just building your platform, whether it's your blog, it's your business, it's whatever it is. And there's been some really cool principles that I was able to pull out of there that I'm going to apply in my church and also within the podcast. So you'll probably see some of that stuff changing. Well, you have already seen some of that changing or or some of those changes already. If you've been to the website and you've checked out our, what is TRG page kind of explaining what the podcast is, how it started uh, because you can go there and see some of our, well, most downloaded episodes and most read articles on that page there. So if you're new, hello and welcome, go to the website, click on the, what is TRG and you can get a, a good kind of starter pack, so to speak, for the podcast. So yeah, learning a lot, excited to apply some of that stuff, and it's going to be totally awesome. And speaking of applying things and, well, stuff that really has nothing to do with it, hey, if you like our show, why not go over to your uh, favorite podcast app of your choice and leave a rating and review and help us out in a good way. Adam, man, what are we doing for this episode? I'm gonna ha- I'm going to hand you the steering wheel. Give me the and, reins. Uh, you can get over it. And yeah. get over it? No, get onto it. I can't talk, man. Take the take the wheel. <laughs> yeah, what well, we're uh well, what I wanted to do and so we're we're nearing the end if not at the end of this generation. We've got a couple of remakes coming out still technically on this generation. I mean, we've got games like Cyberpunk still coming out this fall that'll be on you know, cross gen between this gen and next gen, but we're basically at the end of this generation. So what I want us to do is We'll do this for Xbox also at some point, but just kind of between me, Logan, we got Micah who gave us his top games. I put a post in the community, come up with TRG's top 10 PlayStation 4 games. And so this is any game that was playable on the PlayStation 4. So technically it could be a remake. It could be, you know, we didn't put a ton of parameters. It didn't have to be an exclusive. It could be on other systems if you wanted to. Um, and we got a couple games that are cross gen, I think that are going to be in our top 10. Um, but really just kind of going through, okay, if I was going to, if somebody was going to get a, t- a PlayStation four, what would be the 10 best games, regardless of exclusivity or not that we would say you should go and play. And so what we'll do is um, here in a moment, we'll get, we'll, we'll start listing. We'll go from 10 down to one. I'll list out the the community's number 10 game. I'll give you what Micah's number 10 game was. And then Logan and I can explain uh, why we picked each of ours. And then, so if it's uh, the number 10 game on our list, that will get one point. And then if it's the number nine, it gets two. And so your number one overall game will get 10 points. So once we've given the 10 game, uh, top 10 games for the four different um, ways that we are accumulating those points. So Micah, Logan, myself, and the community. Um, I'll add up the scores, and I will have the top 10 games according to Logan, myself, Micah, and the community. So, yeah, it should be a good time. Essentially, the definitive list of top 10 PlayStation 4 games that you should play. And if you're not, you're not a real gamer. Let's get us started. That's so, Adam... Good. Start off, man. What is the number 10 pick as per the community in the Facebook group? The number 10 pick is Persona 5. Wow. Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the number of votes in point. I just have the the points in the order. But yeah, Persona 5 squeezing in at so number low. 10. So low. What is with you people? Oh man. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm getting a little salty. Anyway, what did Micah pick? Micah, oh, wait, how are we doing this? You, you, you drive this, man. You, you take this section. Actually, I feel like I messed something up. Give me one second. Uh-oh. Persona, <laughs> We're Persona, off great. Persona uh, 5 is actually higher up on the list. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. This is right. I just didn't. Um, I don't know why I marked it off like that. Uh, Mike is number 10 with Death, Death Stranding. Okay. So that'll be one point for each of those games. And I'll, I'll go first on this one, and then we can kind of mix it up as we go. Okay. Um, my number 10 game was, let me pull my list. 
my number 10 game was Dying Light. Mm. So Dying Light was okay. one of the first games that I played when I got my PS4. And so this was really when Adam was was a young pup in the TRG community, <laughs> just looking for some games to play. I just got back from overseas. I, I was about to get married. I might have, I may have just even got married. And I remember when this game came out, I it was before I, you know, before I was acting like I do now, I actually pre I actually bought it digitally, which I never would do nowadays. I just don't buy first That's party sixty dollar games digitally, but I did then. And so it was just I mean, you had the parkour elements which were awesome. The combat was great. It was ex- like the nighttime in that game freaked me out. Uh, yeah. Until I got like more powered, and really one of the most what what was one of the most fun things in that game was a lot of the d- different Easter eggs that you could find in this game. They had them, they had them all over the internet. You could put different. They had some different, um, like uh, what's the list? Like different lists where you could cr- crafting lists where you could craft like bombs and stuff. Like so, they had some like really goofy things. There was a pipe that you could go down at one level at one part of the game, and it was like a, um, a Super Mario Brothers one, the first level within the game. So they had all these little like Easter eggs. You could get um, um, the sword from King Arthur uh, Excalibur. You could get that in the game. They had all these like really fun Easter eggs. The story was engaging. It was intense when you got in certain fights. So that's why I put it at my number ten game because it. I only look back on that game with really, really fond memories being at the beginning of when I first got my PlayStation 4, the Easter eggs, the fun story, the intensity of going out at night. So that's why I've got it at my number number 10 game. Solid pick. Definitely one of the best zombie games that you could play right now. And continuing with that theme of kind of horror, uh, my number 10 pick is Until Dawn, which is a... Uh, Similar to Telltale Games, kind of their choose your own adventure kind of storytelling and based on your choices, the the story flushes out in a different way. Certain characters die or everyone could die or none of the characters could die. It was just a fun game that I remember playing on the PS4 and it was one that me and my wife actually played together. We had a lot of fun. We streamed it on Twitch. I had a lot of fun getting scared and the game actually took a picture of you when it scared you if you had a PlayStation camera. And you can even ask a longtime listener in front of the show, uh, Dakota, because he was there for pretty much every single stream uh, laughing at me getting freaked out by this game. Yeah, Until Dawn, fantastic, fantastic game. If you're not into horror stuff, definitely it's obviously not going to be for you. But for me as someone who enjoys horror games or movies from time to time, depending on the topics or the themes of those things, I thought it was. I thought it was a really well done. Thought it was a really mm-hmm. cool game, and uh, well, got my platinum seal of approval. So, yeah, it? it was one of those great PlayStation Plus games that they gave away at like just the right time. I think it was like around Halloween. It oh, was yeah, a good couch co op game for Hannah to kind of watch me play, and uh, you know, I didn't play through it again, but it's a game that you could play through multiple times because I mean, there's a couple times I lost a couple characters, and I'm like. Uh, I can't believe I made that choice and lost yeah. them. Had some. Yeah. Really, I mean, if you go back and play it now. It had like big name actors and it. it had Hayden Pan- uh, Panettiere, of course, mm-hmm. but it's got Rami Malek, who's now like a big name actor. He was in Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, oh, yeah. One of the girls in it was is in the Superstore uh, TV show. Um, the, the, the jock in the game is the Jordan. Uh, what's his name? Is it Jordan Adams? Jordan Fisher, he was on Dancing. I think he won Dancing with the Stars. He's got, he's like an an, an artist now, like a music musician. So it's got some really high level actors and musicians in the in the game. So it definitely was a good one. Yeah, man, absolutely. So what's All next? Right. Number nine. Number nine on the Facebook group was Bloodborne. So Bloodborne oh, okay. will get two points on Micah's list. His number two game was, I need to stop messing with this. His number, or I guess number nine game was The Last of Us Part Two. Okay. So I'll get two points for that. My number nine game was, I've got too many windows open. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, my number nine game was Days Gone. Okay. So, Good pick. 
as I was looking at my list, this Days Gone was my 2019 game of the year. So wow. I feel like if it was my game of the year for one of the last four or five years, that it needs to be on my list somewhere. And so looking at some of the other games that came out last year, I mean, Jedi Fallen Order was on that, um, came out last year, Resident Evil 2 remake. There are definitely some good games last year, but last year was what we would, I mean, I thought it was kind of a downer year c- compared to, 2018 2017 and so days gone is a game i really enjoyed i mean again if you played it at launch when i eventually played it, it had been updated all the bugs were squashed the adrenaline i mean great story great scenery playing up in oregon there's not enough games that are made for the in the great northwest um fighting a horde is one of the most exhilarating things you can do in video games absolutely like you when you i, I remember when you, you you do the first horde that you fight you're like like they expect me to kill all of these zombies, like not just some of them, not most of them, but they literally want you to just to kill all of them. Like I thought it was impossible, but eventually you learn how to do it. And it's a, it's an, it's a moment. It's an event. It's like, that's not oh, yeah. something like we were talking earlier about Ghost of Tsushima. I feel like at this point I'm going to Ghost of Tsushima. I'm going to, and I could go into a fort and just say, let's go one versus a hundred. And I'm going to take them out. Cause I'm just between the parry system and all the different things moving around bow and arrow, you know, katan like the katais or whatever you're throwing, but you never feel like you're in control versus the horde. Um, you always feel like you're unmatched until the very end, and you're like, I just need ammo. I got to figure out something to kill more guys. But you eventually figure it out, and and so Days Gone was very underrated. I think if that game came out now, and with with the bug fixes and everything, I think people would enjoy it a lot more. I think it got a lot of hate that it didn't deserve. But Days Gone is an excellent game. Yeah, for sure. I'll never forget the how many attempts did it take me to take down? Because there's a horde in the sawmill, which I think is the biggest horde you take on in the game. And I think it took me five tries to do it because there's just so many of them. Such a cool, such a cool experience taking those things on. It's oh man. That's a good game I forgot about. I'll give that an honorable mention. Um, my number nine is not an exclusive. It is the game that I preach and sung its praises of for months on end, bought multiple copies for friends. And that is Titanfall two. What more can there be said of this marvelous game that I have not already said? The answer is, just repeat myself. Guys, if you have not played Titanfall 2, get your act together. Get your life together. Play this game. It is easily one of the best first-person shooters that has come out in recent years. You know, we always want something different. You know, we don't Call of Duty's too stale, Battlefield's too boring, blah, blah. Titanfall 2 spices things up, gives you a robot sidekick, gives you parkour. Gives you all the kind of flash and bells and whistles that you could want in a game. And it's surprisingly humorous and surprisingly uh, human in that it's got a lot of charm and it's kind of endearing. uh, Seeing BT uh, form this relationship with Jack Cooper as pilot and it's like, this is kind of heartfelt. It's seriously a great game. Uh, If you've played Apex Legends, you will love Titanfall 2. It takes place in the same universe, made by the same studio. A lot of the same mechanics are still present in the game. Really, really good game. If you have not played it yet, I highly recommend you go play this game. I don't even know why it's at number nine on my list, to be honest with you. It should be higher. But (laughs) I feel like if I put it at number one, that might be a little too crazy and people will not take me seriously anymore. So I'll leave it at nine for now and play it safe. Nice. All right, number eight games on the TRG list. We have... Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm, okay. On Micah's list, we've got Astrobot VR Mission. Mm. Or Astrobot, uh, I guess it's VR Mission, but um, Astrobot, yeah. which is an excellent game. I guess we could probably add a little bit of commentary to these in case. I know some of these are on both on some of our lists, but Astrobot, what a great game. If I was going to put a VR right. game on there, I'd probably either go Astrobot or Beat Saber. Because both yeah. those games are excellent games. So shout out to Micah for putting Astrobot on there. Um, think, my number seven. Sorry to, sorry to interject real quick. I think I would put Beat Saber in before I put that in. I, I don't know if it, if this probably was just me. 
when I first started playing that Astrobot game, I had the worst experience. It, like nothing worked. The cameras were goofing around. The controls didn't work. I honestly need to give it another shot. Is probably what I need to do. But like, I had a really rough first impression with that game, and so I mean, it is. It's pretty simple. I mean, mm-hmm. there's not the combat's nothing crazy, but the way that they utilize the VR to make it feel full immersive, like it's one of those games that I. It's one of my first games that I show people that in Beat Saber when they yeah. come over and they're like, "Oh, you got VR?" I'm like, "Yeah, put this headset on." Do you know anything <laughs> about video games? No. Okay, well, let's play Beat Saber. Do you like video games? Hey, you've got to try this. Is usually how I would describe um, Astrobot. I know. So, so, what was your pick? My number seven is. Uh, Hold up. I you, guess number eight. Number eight? Sorry, number okay. eight. Number eight. Uh, I think it's because it's worth. Yeah, my number eight. Ratchet and Clank. Oh, so okay. So the 2016, another one of those games that early on, earlier on in the this generation, forty dollar game, that was just what a delight. It was just uh, uh, just a good time all the way around. The beauty of seeing Ratchet and Clank Clank in that beautiful, you know, 1080p or 4K, whatever you want to call it. Just the beautiful graphics. I was not a huge Ratchet and Clank on like PS3. Uh, most of the Ratchet and Clank I've played has been on my Vita through the collection that you have on there. And so the controller's a little bit wonky there. It's not super clean in, in regards to the look, of course. But man, that game was excellent for what it was. It was it was it stayed in its lane. Goofy guns, great humor, fun combat, uh, fun worlds, and it's just it's another one of those games that I I'm I mean I can't wait. As much as I'm excited for uh, Miles Morales on PS5, uh, the new Ratchet and Clank might be up there just as high. Like that's just again kind of that 3D platforming. It's just in my alley. I mean, it's it, those are the games that I love, so I'm super excited for the new Ratchet and & Clank. And it's a lot of it's because uh, Insomniac did such a great job at remaking the one for this generation, so I'm super excited for it. And uh, definitely a game that I, I, I really, again, number eight on my list for the best in this generation because I loved it. Right on, right on. For number for my number eight pick, it's going to be one of the best PlayStation games that a lot of you, dear listeners, probably never played, let alone heard of it, and that is Resogun. Coming from Housemark Studios, it was one of the first games to be given out on PlayStation Plus around the launch of the PlayStation Four, and it's a how do I say it? it's three D, but it's really on a two D back and forth platform kind of thing. But it's a, a typical shoot 'em up, but it's very flashy. It's very stylish. Uh, it's got a lot of neon. It was a lot of fun. And from what people tell me, it's a pretty easy platinum, but I still haven't managed to get it. So I don't know what these other crazy people use as a measurement for easy, but it ain't easy. But it's a lot of fun. It's I will say that it's easy in the sense that you can pick it up and play it and enjoy it. It doesn't take much to really get going you just use the d-pad to go back and forth up and down you use the uh i think it's the x button to shoot you have a button for like bombs to take out all these different enemies if you get swarmed you have a boost mechanic that lets you fly through enemies so you can get to a safe spot each stage ends with a boss fight it's it's a classic formula but brought into a modern era and it's a really solid game i it's what made me look at house mark and go i'm going to play all of their games that come out. And I have played all their games. I think, no, I did play dead nation. Uh, so I, I, they just make good games and Rezo again was such a good first impression for me getting onto the PS4 and then playing this and going, I cannot wait to play more games like this. And house Mark has not disappointed me. And Rezo again was where it all started. Fantastic game. If you still have not played it yet. And I think, some of the updates that they've put an update in that lets you make your own ship. Now I didn't continue playing the game. Once they put the, that in there, I was long gone into other games at that point. So I didn't get back around to it, but it's worth checking out a lot of the new updates and stuff I hear are good. It's well worth playing. So that's my number eight pick. Nice. Uh, coming back to the TRG group at number seven, we've got uncharted four. So we're going to save some comments there because uh, did you forget about it? I just realized I forgot about Uncharted 4. What kind of Sony pony am I? Oh, 
We can we can fix it if we need later. But Uncharted oh. Four. So we're gonna save because mm. I got I've, I've got it on my list at some point. Okay. Also. Uh, and wow. Micah's list, we've got Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, again, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, my list actually is also Final Fantasy VII remake. So I guess we can talk about that. Me and Mike on the same same wavelength here. As a as a never fan, Final Fantasy guy, never played one. Tried fifteen, didn't like it. This game had me at hello. The the storytelling <laughs> was excellent. The combat was just as good. The graphics were stupid good. Um, okay, I thought you were gonna say I thought you were just gonna leave it at stupid. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa Adam. Well, stupid can also be like they're stupid. Like, oh, okay, fair enough. Fair good. enough. Fair um, enough. I mean, look at. The more I think about it, it's amazing that it's not higher on my list because I don't have a negative thing to say about that game. It has some janky, you know, Japanese stuff in it. There's some weird moments in it. You know, you get to the Bumblebee, I think is what it was called, or the whatever the where you cross dress. There's some weird moments yeah, in it. Very stereotypical anime tropes that no are doubt. a little too much, even for me. And I'm into anime. You know, I can agree with that. But I cannot. I, I hate that we're gonna have to wait multiple years for the next one because I yeah. I, I yeah. fell in love with that game and uh, yeah, there's a, and I, and again, I've never, I never played the original. So without knowing a lot of the background, the Easter eggs, I know that there was, I, we talked about this a lot when we reviewed the game. Um, there's a lot of things that I missed uh, that I didn't quite understand, but I knew were important, but that game, it lived up to the hype. Like I didn't think it was possible because so many people were going like, they've been clamoring for a remake for so long, but it lived up to the hype. And I, and I, I can't believe it. Like they gave the people what they wanted and I can't think of anything that they could have changed that would have made it better for fans. So um, yeah. maybe a true fan of the series could correct me on that, but from what I understand, most people loved it and I loved it. And so that's why it's number seven on my list. Man. Can I believe I forgot uncharted four? Yeah. Well, we'll keep going. My number seven pick is actually going to be Bloodborne. I wanted to put right. that up a little bit higher because it was my first Soulsborne game. And man, what a ride that was. Learned a lot about myself. Learned a lot about what video games could be, how difficult they could be. But at the same time, there was something to this game's gameplay and its aesthetic that just sucked me in. Played it with, I remember when the game came out and I played it with a group of friends for, well, as long as till they lasted. I think I was the only one out of the group of friends that actually finished the game. No, 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 no. Um, my other friend Jared got the platinum for it. So he went way further than I did. But really cool game. Uh, it, it's definitely not for everyone. This is one of those games I'll recommend and be like, well, for some people, because the nightmarish design of a lot of the enemies is, it, it can be a bit intense and a bit overwhelming, but it's just, I think if you've never played the Soulsborne games, like Dark Souls, Sekiro, those kind of games, I think this is probably the one to start with. I think this might be the most, I don't want to say accessible, but you know, one of the, one of the problems I have with the other games, not including Sekiro, is that the movement is a little clunky, like slow, mm -hmm. but you never really had that in Bloodborne. It seemed kind of, like the game wanted you to get into the fight, be fast, be quick, uh, and and just be a little more intense with it. And you see that come through in a lot of the boss fights, whereas Dark Souls is a little more slow, strategic. This one's a little more frenetic, I think is a good word for the combat, but it's fun. I really enjoyed it, despite the times that the game beat me senseless and made me want to break my controller in half. But I think it's well worth playing. It's well worth trying out and just seeing how you feel about them. But I think it's definitely one of the standouts on the PS4. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you've listened to us at all, you know my history with Bloodborne. Um, I finished it with some help, but that game was, that was my first like, you know, Demon Souls or whatever, Dark Souls type game. Mm -hmm. It may be my last one also. I'm always tempted to try to get back into them, but. That's fair. Yeah. They tortured me so much, that game. Um, yeah. I think. The boss battles were really just the hardest part. I think I enjoyed the yeah. in between. The boss worlds can be just so brutal yeah. that they can almost beat you down. Um, but I loved all the combat of the minor characters because I feel like you could figure those out enough where they were a good challenge and not overwhelming when the bosses always felt overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and, and I think yeah. 
I think that first boss fight, uh, I, I, I know this is like the second boss fight. I think with Father Gas Coin is like one of those real moments where you realize that this game can ramp itself up in difficulty so stinking fast that it's exciting and terrifying all at the same time. But yeah, the cleric beast is, I mean, he's no joke either. That's so true. That's true. But well, good, good stuff there. All right, moving on to number six. Uh, number six in TRG, uh, the community is The Witcher 3. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, Witcher was this, 3. Was this, was this in our Christian group? Picking know, Witcher. How dare, <laughs> I'm just, how dare I'm just I? kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. So, yeah, we got Witcher 3. On my list, or on uh, Micah's list, we got Resident Evil 2 Remake. Mm, okay. On my list, we've got Ghosts of Tsushima. Tsushima! Wow. Okay. And so, we've already talked about some, so I'm not going to belabor it too long. And I haven't even finished it. So this wait, wait, game... wait, 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 wait. What's the title of the game? I don't know. Ghost of, Ghost of Tsushima. There you go. <laughs> okay, I thought you said it right. I was like, look at him. Look at him. Because in the... And the Jokes poll you put you, in my notes, I've got it spelled wrong. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the sequel in there, Ghosts of Tsushima. <laughs> yeah, it's like Psalm. You know, we say Psalm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's really just Psalm. <laughs> and so oh. that's basically how I talk about Ghosts of Tsushima. But man, that's what a funny. Game. I like what a that. game. It wild card. Who would have thought that this game I mean. would be the banger that it is? But it's excellent, so I'm not gonna bel- I'm not gonna belabor it because we've already gushed a bunch yeah. about it today. But that's so my number good. six game. So good. Mine is gonna be Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. I, I don't have anything to add to it except that game is fantastic. It's open world. Aloy is a great character. You got robot dinosaurs. Just came on PC. Apparently, it's not optimized very well. So maybe don't play it on PC. Play it on PS4 instead. But solid game. Really cool game. I like it a lot. And uh, it's my number six pick. What was it again? Remind me. I'm, I, I got, oh, Horizon. Her, Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Horizon in a few moments. Um, oh, so here we go. On to number... Guys, this seems like it should be easier than it is, but I've got like eight lists in front of me, and I'm trying to keep track of points. <laughs> So bear with me, guys. This is like, this is like fantasy football game, ball for video games. The number five game for the community is Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, okay. That's a fair pick. Um, my number five game is... Un- or Micah's number five. See, I'm all over the place. Micah's yep. number five is Rocket League. Mm, Shout out to pick. Rocket League. I don't know if it's on either of our lists, but... It's a good pick. I mean, game, it changed the game. I mean, it's a professional esports now. What a game. Yep. Um, soccer and race cars and demolition derby. What can be better? Um, my number five is uncharted four. Mm. So uncharted four, I think if it came out more recently, people would still be down with it. I think we forgot how good that game is by the fact that you even forgot that it was on your list says something about that. That game wrapped up the Drake saga. Excellently. The epilogue was perfect. The cinematics were amazing. There were some great Easter eggs in that game. Um, the scenery, of course, was classic Uncharted. One of those games that it was a 10. I mean, that game was a 10. And I think because it came out so long ago, what was that, 2016? That it was it came a while out, ago. Yeah. We've, we've forgotten about its greatness. But Uncharted 4 was, I mean, that's one of PlayStation's powerhouses. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes maybe it gets... Uh, overlooked because of Last of Us being also under Naughty Dog. But mm. Uncharted 4 is like, that's one of those games. It's It was a PlayStation Plus game. So I'm, I need to go back and play it again, along yeah. with probably all of the Uncharted games, because right. those are pure third person action adventure, PlayStation. It's right in the wheelhouse. I mean, they are one of the, you know, PlayStation is known for their third person action adventure games. And it really started in some ways with Uncharted. And so uh, Ford did not let down it in, in any capacity. The multiplayer was actually pretty fun also. Yeah. Um, didn't play in a ton, but it was it was fun. Um, but what a game, Uncharted 4. Shame on you, Logan, for forgetting it. I know, man. And it's one of the few games out there that has a shockingly pro-marriage theme in there it. There you go. And so. They, they fought for it. 
Ah, oh, dude. What a game. Are we about to re- just redo the entire Uncharted 4 episode we did right here, right now? That was just <laughs> such a good game, dude. Ah, oh, I still remember that time when... I, sorry, I won't get into it. Spoilers and all that jazz. So good. Um, Dude, what do I do with my number five pick now? I feel like this is the only place I can put an Uncharted 4 here, and it'd be okay. But... I, well, what you have to do is you got to bump all the other ones. You'd have to bump out until dawn, move tight and fall to ten, resogun to uh, seven or whatever it is. Can I do that? Are you going to let me do we that? Can, we can allow it. I'm okay with until dawn getting bumped off and everything else getting moved down a peg, okay. so I can fit uh, Uncharted in. Well, I guess Uncharted would be. Number six, wouldn't it? This would be your number... I mean, we can make it your number six game. Originally, your number six game was... Horizon. the last one was. Yeah. So, if Until Dawn goes off... So, this pushes Horizon Zero Dawn... To number seven. So, right now, I have Titanfall as number ten. Resogun as number nine. Mm -hmm. I have Bloodborne at number seven. Mm, number eight number eight yeah ten nine eight horizon zero dawn number seven and then number six and chart four be... number six okay we'll do that we'll do that make it even worse on you making you do more work because now you gotta reconfigure all those points after <laughs> no. you've done the work to do the math <laughs> i just threw a wrench in your Why? entire scoring man i'm sorry it's just going to be a crapshoot. Who knows? One of you guys are going to have to listen and really keep track of the points and clean up our top 10. I'm going to try my best, though. You, you know Skinner will probably do it. That's what we brought him on for. I He's think the we're still on sprint. track. We're okay. We're okay. So, right. that goes back into my number five pick, then. I'll talk about that for a little bit. And, ironically enough, it is Persona 5. Because, y'all know your boy loves you. Some Persona, right? Persona 4 Golden, one of the greatest JRPGs of all time. Persona 5 comes dangerously close to overtaking it, except for the fact that it's 100 hours long, and there ain't no way your boy's playing that game again. I played through Persona 4 four and a half times to get the Platinum. I ain't doing I ain't doing one more playthrough through Persona 5. As much as I really enjoyed that game, as much as I love the style, the flair, the music, the combat, and everything in between, yeah, I'm not playing that game again. I do have Persona 5 Royal. haven't played it yet. So I can't really say if that's any like better or not. I know the trophy list is way better, but Persona 5, man, such a good game. Not a mm. huge fan of the ending. Gets a little too weird at the end, but still one of the best JRPGs, not only on the platform, but in gaming as a whole. So there's mm. that. Excellent and then game. Watch, and then watch, I'll change my tune when we get to Nintendo and I talk about Xenoblade and be like, no, this is better than Persona. But yeah, we'll get to that. Persona 5 was definitely great. Um, it was more Persona 4 and prettier. And, mm-hmm. you know, some of the gameplay choices were, you know, some of the dungeon stuff weren't, weren't my favorite. But, yeah. I mean, that game, I wish I could have played it completely on my Vita. I played it remote play on my Vita, which made it, it worked. But mm-hmm. that's a game that's meant for handheld just to be able to take it on the go. So it needs to come to Switch or Vita or something. But Persona was, I mean, it was an excellent game. It It's probably around, it's in my top 15 for sure. Um, yeah. But it didn't crack my top 10. So good. All right. So that was your number five. Five. Wow. Okay. I saw that weird. Number five. Wow. Okay. That, that, that makes sense. Again, I'm, I'm all kind of, all kinds of thrown off. Just One, think of Persona two, Five, three, number four. five. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I messed them up, dear listeners. <laughs> um. So, okay, we're on to number four. Right. So the number four game of TRG was Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, okay. Getting some mad respect. Uh, Micah's number four was Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. We've already talked a little bit about that. My number four is The Witcher 3. Okay. So, Witcher 3 was before some of these other games. I think, again, it's above Uncharted 4. So, for, and, and you look at some of these other games that came out 
some of my lists, some of my games are, are kind of dated, you know, some of the early gen games for a long time, probably until my next three games, the Witcher of three was just, uh, I, I mean, I guess that makes sense if it's my number four top game overall, but it was my jam. Like the, I, I came to it like three times. Uh, I played it for like three months, took a break, played it for three months, took a break, finished it because that game was so big. The storytelling was so great. And I barely did. Um, I mean, half the stuff I feel like, I mean, I feel like I could have done so much more because there's so much on the map. It's almost overwhelming, but um, yeah, one of the best storytelling, some of the best storytelling this generation. I mean, CD project red just, they, they, they pulled out all the bells and whistles. They gave a bunch of free stuff away. Um, it was my first ever Witcher experience. And so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good things to be said about the Witcher three. Um, it's, it's a 10, no doubt. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my number, number four game. Right on. My number four is actually final fantasy seven remake. And I played the original, two maybe three times now total and so by the time i got to the remake i was like this is exactly what i wanted out of a final fantasy 7 remake i wanted the game to look good i wanted the gameplay to be great i wanted it to be updated with some of the maybe a few join a few changes a few changes <laughs> golly a few changes to the story to maybe make it a little more coherent because I'm sorry. If you go back and play the original Final Fantasy VII, the story is not super coherent. There's some pretty big gaps in there that make it kind of confusing. But this one, I felt they did a good job of really remaking it and helping you to get to know the side characters better and to really just draw you in to this game, this world, and it's a blast to play. And really, I don't know why I don't have the platinum trophy for it. I need to go back and play it. Cause it was just such a good game. Really enjoyed playing it earlier uh, this year. It did come out this year, right? Was it this year? Uh, yeah. Gosh, the 2020 just felt like forever. So anyway, final fantasy seven remake is my number four. All right. We're on the top three. And we're not doing too bad on time. I mean, we're getting there, but all right. Uh, number three in the community is Spider-Man. Mm. Number three on Micah's list is Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. Number three on Adam's list, Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, okay. Um, I know you talked about it some, or we. I mean, you, it's on your list, but wow. Um, where did Robo Dinos? Robo Dinos. Yeah, Robo, Robo Dinosaurs. On. Um, Aloy was a, was a intriguing character. I mean, you don't see too many lady leads outside of Laura Croft. Um, we're starting to see more of them. Um, but, a and, an interesting world, some really good storytelling, the combat. I mean, going against some of the big dinosaurs in that game, you're like the different ways that you could choose to attack them. I mean, you could just go in guns blazing or with all your of your different weapons, or you could, you know, tear off different parts of their armor to weaken them, to expose them. Just a lot of fun different ways that you could approach the combat in that game it was really interesting. Um, the story in that game is really good. I mean, talking about some of the decisions they had to they had to make. Really excited about um, seeing how that continues um, here with the the next uh, what is it Forbidden West? I think is what the next one's called. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a, what an excellent, excellent new IP in the PlayStation portfolio that, Mm -hmm. I mean, it went up, it went toe to toe with Zelda and people were playing Horizon more than Zelda. So that's, that was quite the feat for them to accomplish and say, yeah, we're going to go, we're going to release, was it three days after or before? I think it was three days before Zelda. Yeah, I think it was before. Um, We're going to release three days before Zelda and people are going to want to play our game and people did. And so it was was quite the feat for that game. So that was yeah. my number three game. Good times. Good times. My number three pick is uh, me and Micah are clearly on the same wavelength here. I went with Ghost of Tsushima for my number mm-hmm. three pick. It's just, I can't, just 
I already said enough. You guys are going to hear it on the Ghost of Tsushima episode. It's ugh, so stinking good. I'll leave it at that. Hmm. All right. Number two game on the community. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Just okay. talked about that. The number two on Micah's list, God of War. Wow, okay. Number two on my list, Spider-Man. So, uh, I've never really been a big... I mean, I've not played any of the old Spider-Man games. Like, I know Spider-Man what, PS2 is a real real popular one. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there was one on GameCube that people liked a lot. But I think when you think of Spider-Man on this generation, it's another one of those games of like, how could they have made it better? You know, the 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 exhilaration. I'm, that was another one of those games where you have somebody come over. They've not played video games maybe ever or in a long time. And they're like, oh, you like Spider-Man? Here, play this game. And they pick it up and immediately they're like, oh, my goodness, this feels good. <laughs> I mean, I remember letting my buddy <laughs> come over. I uh, let my buddy come over and, and just swing around the city. He didn't even fight people. He's like, I just want to swing. And it feels so natural. It feels so good. Um, the graphics in that game were stunning. The combat was, I mean, some of the best since, like, you know, some of the Arkham games. The way that you could string combos together in that game were awesome. The different ways that you could, you know, customize your the, the suits that you liked. You could put on the, the suit, the different... Um, like certain skills, I don't remember what they called them, but the different enhancements that you could choose to do, um, the side missions, the way they brought in other characters, the way that they finished that story, thinking like they're not going to do what they're about to do, and they do. Um, And then to be able to bring Miles Morales into that and and do an offshoot, man, it's kind of amazing that Spider-Man isn't number one, but that says something about the number one game. But... Spider-Man, again, hit on all the right spots. Um, yep. And so there's, I know you played some of the DLC. It seemed like the DLC was well received. It was really um, good. I was surprised. You know, we talked a lot about Ghost of Tsushima being one of those games where you wanted to do everything in it. Spider-Man was one of those games for sure. Um, I didn't get a platinum, but it was a game that, mainly because I didn't want to chase down certain missions. I don't but blame you. It's one of those so, games that you just, yeah, it's one of those games where you do basically everything that's on the map because yeah. you enjoyed it and it wasn't burdensome. It wasn't annoying. You didn't, you didn't feel like you were grinding. It just was fun to, I mean, the Easter eggs, you're, you're flying around. I mean, you can go to Stark, you know, Avengers Tower. You can go to where um, Doctor Strange's house is. Yeah. You can go to Harlem. You can go to Brooklyn. You can go to all these different areas. And it feels like you're in those movie universes. So what an excellent, excellent game. Yeah, definitely. I remember uh, because the game has a great photo mode. I remember taking a selfie outside of uh, Dr. Strange's mansion. And it was just, uh, it's just one of those things like a comic book nerd. You're like, this is so cool. Like, this is, you know, you kind of geek out a little bit. Um, Adam, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think I'm going to surprise you a little bit with my last two picks. Okay. Um, my number two pick is also Spider-Man and I don't have much else to add beyond it's, it's Spider-Man. If you haven't played it, yeah, get your life together. It's really, really good. All right. So that well, brings us to are, number guys. one. Number one, number one in the community was God of War. Number one on Micah's list was Spider-Man. So he, wow. he kind of went flip flop one, two, uh, number one on my game on my list is, I mean, this is no surprise. God of War. Um, well, that's Logan. What's your number one game, guys? This should come as no surprise to any of you when I say that Knack is my. No- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Knack is nowhere near uh no- number one spot. It's actually God of War, also not yeah. God of War, also like it's. I'm throwing. It, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. I mean, we can kind of go back and forth on this one since it's it's both of our top game and it's the community's top game, but. I think when I think of God of War, um, there's a lot of things I could say I think of first. You know, I think of the storytelling, the combat, but the relationship between Kratos and Atreus uh, is probably what I think of the most. Like the way that they do the storytelling between father and son in that game was, um, I mean, it was super memorable. I remember certain scenes in that game I will are some of my favorite scenes in video game history. Um, the one in particular that I always think of is when, uh, Kratos goes, 
he like goes into this other dimension and he's gone for, he thinks like 30 seconds to mm, a minute. Yeah. And then yeah, he comes yeah, yeah. back and Atreus was like, where are, where were you? You were gone. Like he had to kill, you could just see the bodies everywhere. He had to kill all these um, enemies. And so for Kratos, it felt like he was gone just for moments, but for Atreus, he was gone for like, you don't know the time, but it seemed like a long time. And so that scene was gut riching. That's when I really knew I'm like, this game is special. Then you get to the end. Like there's not many games when I get to the end of the game and I'm like clapping. Like I was just like, Hannah was in the room with me and I'm like, Oh yeah. It's like, Andy, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like Kevin when he's eating the Snickers in the office when they're like trying to be quiet for a long time and he takes a bite of the Snickers. And he's like, Oh yeah. And they're like, you had to say something. He's like, yeah, like it was so good. That was me at the end of, uh, God of war. I'm like clapping, just being like, Oh yeah. Yes. Like it was the finale was the finale battle was so epic. The intro battle was so epic. The storytelling, the one cuts, you know, the no loading screens. They, this was the perfect game. It, I have the combat. Uh, you, I need to let you jump in before I talk and say everything. But Logan, <laughs> why did you love God of War as your top game on PlayStation this generation? So here's the thing. Here's what makes us a little, uh, I don't know if weird is the right word. If you guys go back and listen to several episodes i don't think i said this on the god of war episode we did but like i was like this game's good but it's not like game of the generation good right and so to go from there to here you know just kind of as you think about it it's like it's like when you think about what makes a game the best of a console generation you got to think about do you want to play it again if given the opportunity Would you want to play the game again? And I'm not saying I wouldn't want to play Spider-Man again. I definitely would, but I wouldn't want to do everything in the game again. Some of those, like some of those side missions, they could be taken out of the game and I wouldn't miss them at all. Playing as Mary Jane and Miles Morales, you could take those out and I I wouldn't miss them. You know, now if you let me play as Miles Morales as Spider-Man, with the web slinging and the like in, invisible powers and stuff that he's got. Cool. I'll take that. But God of war is a game that, at, you know, the more and more I thought about it, it really does fire on all cylinders. The side stuff is a blast, especially going after the Valkyries it is a true test of your skill in that game. You look at all the characters in there. I don't think there's a single character in that game. I hated. And then when you add in just the, just how cool it feels to throw that axe and then recall it man it's like yes and then you get into the combat and you feel even more like well kind of manly and like ah you know the wolverine or arnold schwarzenegger or something but i think what really grounds god of war is its story what you were talking about the relationship between kratos and atreus and you see that kratos wants to be a dad he wants to be a, he wants to be there for his son He just doesn't know what that looks like. And he's trying to figure that out. And you have this great just growth throughout this entire journey that culminates at the top of this mountain that is so symbolic of this whole journey in this relationship between Kratos and Atreus. They're trying to climb this mountain to get to the top and and figure out what it means to be a family in this new circumstance that they're dealing with. And it just, ah, it's an incredible game, man. Yeah. It's an incredible game. Plus Kratos has the, like one of the best voices in all gaming. Like when they, when you pull out the, uh, the blades, the chaos, chaos or whatever. Yeah. You're you're playing this whole game with this ax and you're like, am I ever going to get the chaos blades again? Uh, is it Blades of Chaos or isn't it Chaos Blades? I think it's Chaos Blades. I think you had it right. Whenever you get them and you're like, uh, it, it goes to a whole new level. Of, yeah. You can start switching between the two. The Valkyrie battles are epic. Um, you see some of the Easter eggs to the old games when they're like walking through certain areas. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah. They're, and then you, I mean, if you watch the document, there was that documentary that came out later about the game, seeing just all that Cory Barlog and his team put into the game, it really makes you even appreciate the game even more. So, um, 
Yeah. It, I mean, if I'm being honest, I can. There's a lot of games that I really love. Um, I've played some other games more times, but God of War is is probably it's. I've said for a while it's probably my favorite game, potentially my favorite game of all time. Um, it's it's for sure in my top three um, of game favorite games I've ever played. Story, especially story driven games. I've got maybe more memories in some other games, but when I'm talking about a story driven uh, single player game, there's not many that would go above God of War. Yeah. So, what a game. Well, you ramble on about something else. I'm adding up. I'm adding up our totals. Sounds um, good. Well, I was gonna add, you know, dear listeners, as you're sitting here listening to this and you're listening to us gush about a lot of these games, a lot of these games that we mentioned, we have done episodes on. So, mm. if you have some free time and maybe you're a new dear listener and you want to go back and listen to those episodes, definitely head over to the reformgamers.com and click on the podcast button, and it will give you a full uh, catalog of our episodes. You can go check out you know, what we thought about God of War, what we thought about Uncharted 4, what we thought about Titanfall 2, and all these other games. The cool thing about our website, too, is you can actually click the magnifying glass and type in the title of the game, and it'll show you all the episodes and even articles where we've discussed those games. So maybe if you, like I said, if you're new to the show or, you know, you're a long time to your listeners and, and maybe you missed a few of those episodes, you can go back and check those at your leisure and enjoy and see what we had to think about um, those episodes. Plus, if you really enjoyed our last episode with Matt Millsap, where we talked about the last of us part two, he joined us for the God of War episode. And it was probably in all honesty, one of the best episodes we've done uh, in mm-hmm. our entire uh, run here at TRG. So like I said, all that stuff is available in our backlog. Just t- go to the website, the reformgamers.com, click the magnifying glass, type in whichever game you're curious about, listen to the episode, check out the articles. And if, if we didn't cover a game that maybe we talked about and we need to let us know on our socials, we'll, uh, we'll get to work on that and see what we can do. Nice. All right. Well, I have, done my math as best as i can amidst the craziness <laughs> math is hard man we have a couple ties okay so it's kind of top eight slash top 10 because yeah but anyways with let me look at the points here with seven points our number 10 game would be persona 5 okay um with eight points our number nine game is red dead redemption 2 Okay. Sneaking in. We barely even Snuck talked in, about man. it. Um, I mean, let me give you a quick shout out. Great graphics. Um, it was kind of boring at times, but pretty fun <laughs> <Yeah>. storytelling. <laughs> um, but graphically, I mean, that game was excellent. So I'm not surprised that it's on a lot of people's top games. Um, after that, at 10 points, our number seven game is uh, Bloodborne. Okay. Tied at 14 yeah. points, we have... So this is where it kind of gets funny, so we can just kind of put them in any order. So we'll say six and seven. Or See, I've messed this all up. I went, <laughs> I, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to say it starting at eight. So eight, Persona 5, seven, Red Dead, six, Bloodborne. Tied for fifth place is The Witcher 3 and Uncharted 4 with 14 points. Wow. Um, the number four game is Final Fantasy seven with 17 points tied with 28 points uh at number three is uh ghost of tsushima and horizon zero dawn nice and number two spider-man with 36 points and number one almost with the perfect score if it wasn't for micah messing everything up (laughs) uh god of war with 39 points is trg's best game of the playstation 4 generation so i mean what a lineup. It's like, stacked, dude. That's, it's stacked. Those are, and again, we've got a list of other games here that are excellent games. And um, I mean, it'll be fun to, to do this for Xbox. And I'm not trying to throw shade at them right now. But man, what a generation for PlayStation. Yeah. Um, when it comes to games, they showed out big time. Now, again, some of these, I mean, on our list, Red Dead is uh, cross-gen, Witcher's cross-gen, Final Fantasy VII cross gen. No, no, it's not. Final Fantasy VII's PlayStation. Um, a couple of these, so that's what two or three. Mm-hmm. But out of our top ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven of the top ten on PlayStation were exclusives. Um, that's a that's legit. What a generation for PlayStation. Way yeah, to represent. Um, next gen is going to be a battle, no doubt. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be cool to see how Xbox brings it with Game Pass and some different things. But whew, I'm glad that when I got married and I asked for a system for my bachelor party that <laughs> with the help of the TRG community back in the day, I went with PlayStation because, man, what a great generation of games. Yeah, man. It's it's funny. I look back at when I got my PlayStation 4 on – it was in 2012. It was on Black Friday. I waited outside of a GameStop. I got the last one. I look back at, at that time there and just being giddy to, to play one of the next-gen systems. And, and, you know, I knew I was going to play some really cool games, but here it is, 2020. Golly, almost eight years later. Really? Oh, man. I'm old. Uh, you know, you and you look back at all the games that you played, and there's even some that we didn't mention that, you know, would make a top 15 or a top 20 list if we if we stretched it out that far. What a what an awesome last couple of almost a decade, really, of playing some really, really solid games. And I'm sure someone's gonna fact check me on that because it probably wasn't 2012 that these systems came out. It was probably no, it was it was like what 2014? Was it 2014? 2013 or 2014? Either way, um just thinking just in that all that time, man. We uh we've been blessed. We've been blessed to play some really really cool games and dear listeners, if you're just now getting into the PS4 and you know, you just picked one up and you're looking for some games to play, hopefully this will get you started and hopefully you start with the best, which is God of War and uh Actually, you probably want to work at the bottom of the list and work your way up because if you play God of War, everything else is just going to be a mad disappointment for you. No, I'm kidding. You'll enjoy them. But hopefully this will this list uh, is a good resource for you. It'll help you out. And uh, maybe if you got some of these games on your backlog, it'll help you knock out some of those other ones a little bit faster. But as we round out this episode of the Reform Gamers, we always want to leave you with something to do, something to check out, some recos. But besides this large list of games that we just gave you, Adam, what are some things or a thing that the dear listeners should check out this week? Yeah, this is a new podcast that I found last week. I think, I don't know if you shared it. Somebody shared it, retweeted it. Um, But the Christian Geek Podcast, it's new to me, but it seems like it's been around forever. There's like over 370 something episodes. Yeah, yeah, I know the guy that does that. um, he He recently did an episode with Colin Moriarty. Mm -hmm. Um, that was super interesting. Just kind of talking about, um, politics and gaming, religion and gaming, um, being a Christian in the gaming, uh, business and worldview and how just, just a really interesting conversation. It's maybe an hour long. It's a part of a larger episode. So you might have to fast forward some if you find out the podcast episode, but check out the Christian Geek podcast, specifically the episode with Colin Moriarty. And I'm hopefully, I haven't listened to any of his other episodes yet, but I'm hopefully it seemed like a really interesting guy. So I think I'm going to try to listen to more of his stuff. Yeah, man. Cool stuff. He, uh, the guy that hosts that, uh, his name is Pater. Uh, I can't remember what his last name is. He was on one of the last episodes of fireside chats that mm-hmm. Colin does or did for a while on his show where he brought people on from different career fields and interviewed him. A really fascinating series of podcasts. And, uh, yeah, that, that interview that he did uh, with him was really good. So it's cool to see that Colin came on his show and discussed Mm -hmm. a lot of those topics. I, uh, I had that on my queue on YouTube to, to check out, but I haven't, I haven't gotten around to it just yet. So I will have to do that. I'll have to do that. Uh, as far as my records go, you know, I kind of mentioned this earlier, uh, kind of tongue in cheek or joking and passing about how. Uh, you know, we got to focus on the positives in 2020 because 2020 has been a rough year, uh, I think, for all of us. And it's very easy to get discouraged and to focus on the bad and not really take into account the good. And one of these, you know, my wife's been my wife has been really good about reminding me of all the good that has gone on in our lives this year. You know, we've uh, thankfully my my job. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, got a heavier workload because we took on all the streaming stuff, but you know, I was able to help out the school with their graduation stuff. You know, we bought a house. Um, we're fine. We're finally like financially stable, which is a weird way to say, I'm not saying it's the flex or anything. I'm trying to just think of the positives that leads into this. 
you know, I was feeling down a couple of days ago, but I saw this tweet by uh, Taylor Gray that says a lot of y'all saying 2020 is trash just to fit in. You know, God been good to you and he's been doing some amazing things in your life this year. Go ahead, shine that light in the darkness. This world needs hope. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And it just kind of kicked me in the gut because I was being all woe was me and having a pity party. And I'm like, nah, God's been good this year. You know, I think if, I think it's easy to focus on the negatives, but it's, I think we, we need to take time, especially this year to pump the brakes and to take stock of some of the positives that are going on in our life. You know, for some of us, um, you know, we can praise God for our health, you know, whereas other people, they don't, you know, that's, that's not the case for them. You know, it's just taking stock of even just the little things. Um, so my reco is for you, the dear listener to literally right now. Yeah. Right now, get out a piece of paper and a pen or use your phone or whatever, and just write down three positive things about 2020. Just write out three positive things about 2020 that God is doing in your life and just refer back to that on the days where you have doubt or that you're struggling or something like that. And just remind yourself that God has got you. And I'm saying this to myself just as much as I am anybody else really. And uh, so, yeah, that would be my reco. Um, is to name three positive things about that's that God's doing in your life in 2020 and refer back to those on the days that are, that are tough. And uh, I think, I think that'll help. I think that'll help. But one thing you can definitely count on, or at least one of the positives you can definitely add down there is you've gotten TRG in 2020. You'll continue to get TRG in 2020. And if you'd like TRG to continue going and uh, maybe putting out some new content or trying some new things, you can support us over on Patreon at patreon.com. You guys know the spiel already went over it. Yeah, if you guys want to support us over there, you can do that. As always, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the theologian. You can swing by every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we'll talk about video games. We'll talk about theology. We'll talk about social media. Just or you just want to pop by and say hi, say hi. You can also go over to our website, thereformgamers.com. That's really kind of your one-stop shop for everything TRG, from articles to reviews to connecting to us on our social accounts to our show notes. All that stuff is all on our website, thereformgamers.com. And as always, you can keep up with us. You can contact us on Twitter, a TRG podcast. You can like our Facebook page or join the Facebook group. Join our dis- Discord. Join our dis- oh, Gosh, words are hard. You can join our Discord server. Discord. <laughs> and you can also follow us on Instagram as well. And uh, we'll put out some fun memes whenever inspiration uh, strikes Steven. And you, know, and you can see that on there. But anyway, guys, that being said, episode 175 has come to a close. Hopefully this has been a good resource for you. And uh, until next time, be a deer. Keep it locked here. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Reformed Gamers, the podcast all about theology and gaming. TRG is edited by Deer Ear Productions, so thank them for the buttery smooth tones in your ear. If you're looking for extra content, head on over to youtube.com slash The Reformed Gamers. The Reformed Gamers is entirely fan-supported over on patreon.com slash The Reformed Gamers by our dear patrons. The following deer are at the producer level or higher and will forever be thanked at the end of each show. As long as their pledge comes through, or we forget to update the audio. Those people are David Matthews, Colin Gregory, and Wesley Ray. Thank you for your support on Patreon.com, keeping our controllers charged, and supporting Logan in his never-ending quest to collect them all. Platinum trophies, that is. So be a deer, and keep it locked here. Keep listening. We'll catch you later.